um, today's video is one that I was inspired to do last night while browsing um, book blogs. Um, as you know, I read lots of book blogs and I link them down below, so there'll be a couple down there for you to go and investigate. Um, but this video was inspired by Wanderings of a Book Bird, who has done a fantastic list of all the YA releases that are coming out next year, and she's organised them by month as best as she can, because obviously not all of them have a release date, and got a good synopsis of them, and if there's a, a image of the cover, then she's got that there as well. So I was scrolling down this list and thinking, oh, some of these I fancy reading. Well, I made my own list. So as she was so good to organise it by month, I'm going to start off in the month of January. And this little beauty is released, Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ely. Ely? Ely? You know, go with the pronunciation. Um, which is a mix of Katniss Everdeen meets Annie Oakley. It's set in an America where the West has gone to pieces again, there's been a second civil war, and a young girl called Serendipity Jones has inherited her mum's guns and her targets. Um, she's a sharpshooter. She heads off towards the bright lights of the main city, only to find herself in a world that is corrupt, dangerous and pretty sleazy. And we're going to follow her journey of how she survives this world. That is released on the 2nd of January. Also released that day, so it's going to be rather expensive, is Batman Nightwalker. This is by Maria Liu, who also um, wrote Warcross, um, which has just come out and everybody's raving about it. Um, Batman Nightwalker follows on from the Wonder Woman Warbringer. Um, it's the DC YA range of novels coming out that, as far as I can tell, aren't directly connected to anything that we've seen so far. Certainly the Wonder Woman book that I'm reading, it's set in our present day. It has no connections to the film or TV series that I've seen or anything else that I've read so far. They seem to be standalone on themselves, but they're using these iconic DC characters. So the Batman book is about Batman before he's Batman, so he's still Bruce Wayne and gearing up to becoming Batman. A bit what Gotham's doing, really, on the telly. So there we go. But anyway, it appeals to me. Into February, The Unbinding of Mary Reed caught my eye. Um, A, beautiful cover. Um, but also because of the synopsis. This book, written by Miriam McNamara, follows Mary, who lives in a world where, as a girl, she has no place. She belongs nowhere. So she joins up as a sailor on a ship, disguised as a boy. You know, the classic cliché. And finds herself enjoying her life and getting on with it. But obviously she's pretending to be something she's not. And then one day, their ship is boarded by pirates. And in the midst of all the battle going on, Mary sees that one of the pirates is actually a girl like herself. So she throws in her lots and joins the crew and starts a story where she discovers who she is and the things that she believes in and some of the stuff from her past comes back to haunt her. It sounds a really interesting story um, with lots of different aspects to it that kind of appeal. So I'm going to give that a go. And towards the end of the month, February the 20th, we have the sequel to Empress of a Thousand Skies. This is Blood of a Thousand Stars. These are by Rhonda Bezella. Um, I really enjoyed Empress of a Thousand Skies. It was in this year's Fairy Loot box. Uh, in fact, I think it was my first Fairy Loot box I got. And it's a sci-fi story about revolution and finding out who you are and discovering deep, dark secrets. Um, some people found the way the story was told was a little bit loose for them, um, but I always say come to these, this story um, as, as though it's a classic sci-fi story being told um, from like the 50s and 60s when it was very sciencey fiction and a lot of the things that you'd expect in classic sci-fi is in um, Empress of a Thousand Stars. So... If you approach it with that in mind and get your head around that's how this world has been built, then you'll be okay with it. But I'm really looking forward to the sequel. It's only a duology, so that'll be a nice completed story on my shelf. Into April, April the 3rd has this release, Dread Nation. This is by Justina Island, and it's billed as um, Confederate and Union soldiers are rising from the dead. This is an undead story but it's an alternative history of America 
and the main focus um, that I've come across described for this story is it's going to be um, very much a close look at race and society and there'll be parallels with how America is today and how it was back in the Civil War um, so it'll be in America for those that live there that apparently will be very familiar but also very different from what you know um, I do like alternative histories I have to say the cover I was quite impressed with I know you should never judge a book by a cover but you know that kind of gripped me and the whole concept of using history to explain and pick apart what's going on in society now I quite like that so I don't I haven't read much um, American Civil War stuff so I thought I'd give this a go April the 10th is Given to the Earth by Mindy McGuinness. This is the second book in the Given to the Sea duology, I think. So it's following on from events in the first book, which was also a fairy loop book, um, which is quite ironic, really. Um, but I really enjoyed Given to the Sea, which is the first one. Um, it was told from several viewpoints, and because of that, you never got the impression that actually everyone was totally the villain or totally the good person. There were valid reasons for everybody doing what they did and how things were. So I'd be interested to see how the story is going to continue because um, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but things have kind of escalated and traditions have kind of been broken and I want to see how this is going to play out and be resolved. One I don't have a cover for comes out on April 10th also and it's called The Isle of Blood and Stone by Ma Machia Lucia. Um, this is a historical fantasy which follows um, Elias who is a royal map maker and he's best mates with the king who is Ulysses I think it was I didn't write that down but they basically embark on an epic quest to find the king's two lost brothers apparently these maps that have been discovered um, have clues and riddles that they have to solve that will lead them to the brothers now it struck me as a little bit of a Greek mythology Ulysses kind of story um, but I was also intrigued because it was one of the first books that I came across that had a male protagonist in it, um, a male lead. And um, yeah, a lot of the YA books that I've been picking up have female leads. And actually, I quite like reading about men as well. So I thought I'd give this one a go. May the 1st, we have Smoke in the Sun by Rennie Atir. This is the sequel to Flames in the Mist, which, ha, huh, again, fairy loot book. Yeah, they're really good, aren't they? Um, so obviously it's following on from events in Flame of the Mist, which was loosely billed as a Mulan retelling, but apart from the fact that she disguises herself as a boy, cuts her hair, and it's set in feudal Japan, that's about the end of the similarities. It, it, if you're expecting Mulan, no, you're going to be disappointed. If you're expecting a story about a young girl trying to figure out who she is, her place in the world that has no respect or regard for her, um, and... There's a whole lot of supernatural stuff going on as well because it brings in all the spiritual stuff from Japan, which is really, really cool. Um, then you will like Flame in the Mist. So I'm going to go and read the next one in the, I'm hoping it's a duology, might be a trilogy, I'm not certain. But that would be really nice to carry on the story because I quite liked the main characters in it and I liked a lot of the concepts that was going on. Um, then there is, yes, another book we know cover. It's called The Sea Witch by... Sarah Henning and it's released also on May the 1st and this is billed as a wicked retelling literally in the sense of the book um, of the origins of the sea witch from Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid so not Ursula from Once Upon a Time or The Little Mermaid we're talking the original classic story here from Hans Christian Andersen so um, I really like Wicked I have seen the stage production I haven't read the book yet it's sat on my shelf somewhere waiting for me to be read um, but I like the idea of villains from these classic stories that Disney have just vilified actually having their say in the story. I really enjoy the twisted tales, so I think this might be something along similar lines, but obviously it's focusing on the original um, story by Hans Christian Andersen rather than the Disney version of the film that we know. I'm sure there'll be sort of things brought in from the film, but... It'd be really nice if actually they do stick with the original story because it's quite bittersweet. Another book coming out. This one is in July. June, I didn't seem to be very happy with anything in there, which is typical. But July the 31st, we have Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. 
um, which is billed as a mix of Graceling meets Pride and Prejudice. Now, regular people will know my thoughts on Pride and Prejudice and its ilk. Um, but this story kind of got me interested. We meet Maya Rose, who has declared she will hunt demons. Um, the demons killed her mother. They use this magic and she's going to go out and kill him and unfortunately her father has other ideas for her and she ends up being married but it all goes to pot pretty quickly the the marriage is a complete and utter disaster and uh, Maya discovers actually she's not who she thought she was she's actually a demon herself she has this magic running through her and so she has to come to terms with who she is and what she is and find out some of the truth that's been buried throughout her younger life. So, yeah, a little bit of Pride and Prejudice. I'm, I didn't see that in the synopsis, but I'll have to wait and see. It might be more in the etiquette and storytelling. We'll see. Um, I don't actually have a cover for it, but Muse of Nightmares by Alani Taylor is the follow-up to Strange the Dreamer, yet another fairy loot book. Obviously, they're really good at picking good books. Um, so we have some beautiful artwork here. Um, I wish I could actually read who it was done by because this kept popping up on Pinterest and that and I really, really like it. Um, but Muse of Nightmares follows on from Strange to Dreamer where everything has just gone absolutely ah, at the end of the book. It's one of those chapters where you go, no, how can you leave it like that? Um, so I want to see how things are resolved. I believe this is a trilogy but don't hold me to that. Um, but I really want to see how Strange deals with the fallout from the end of the book uh, and how things will change um, as circumstances have changed in the first book. And I really don't want to spoil it, but I will say Strange the Dreamer read very much as a traditional fairy tale story to me. Um, it just had that vibe of, of something from somewhere else from long ago. And once you get your head around about how it's being told, because it's not told how you thought it would be told, and you're not given clues until quite a way in about who you're reading about. So you need to kind of hold everything into your head until you get about to, I'd say, 80 pages, and then everything clicks into place and you get it and you understand what's going on. Um, I think it'll be one of those books that'll be really rewarding as a reread. -re um, because a lot of the clues are signposted, you've just got to know what you're looking for to pick up on them. But yeah, Strange to Dream, uh, um, it was one of the most beautiful books I have read certainly this year. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it, so I want to see where this story now progresses. Um, unfortunately, there's no release date for that one yet, so we're just sort of twiddling our thumbs waiting for that to be announced. So the rest of the books on my list have no official release date, they're just down at some point during the year. So, I've got Ember Days by Alexandra Duncan, which is a historical fantasy featuring wizards in Jazz Age Charleston. So, you know, wizards, magic, jazz, I'm, I'm kind of up for that, you know. I like Princess and the Frog, we'll see where it goes. And finally on the list of books coming out next year, there's A Blade So Black by L.L. L. McKinney, um, which is billed as Alice in Wonderland meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, that kind of talk has been given to me before and I was very disappointed with it. Dark Days Club, looking at you. Um, but this is Alice who battles nightmares in the dream realm of Wonderland, which kind of appeals to me. Um, this book is already getting hate though. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why. It seems to be something that the author has come out and said. Um, so I don't know what she said. And I don't think I actually want to go and read it. I don't want to go and find out the drama because I want to judge the book. I'm not judging the author, I'm judging the book. So I'm going to give this book a go. The key thing that I have noticed with this book is Alice is Black. So there go all your traditional views of Alice in Wonderland. She's a black lass and, you know, why not? It doesn't make any difference to me what the colour of her skin is. Alice is going to go out and slay uh, nightmares and that sounds cool to me. Whether she's white or black, I don't care because I'm on a good story. So if people have issues with the author changing Alice in Wonderland into a black version of Alice in Wonderland, then get over yourselves, please. Um, if you've got issues with what the author is saying about racism, then, you know, it's up to you whether you can keep the author and the book separate, or if you can't, then 
that's also up to you. But I'm not going to go and judge a book based on the hatred that it's already getting and it's not been released yet. I want to read the book and decide for myself. So that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, I will link uh, Wanderings of the Book Birds blog down below. I will actually link to the page with this list on. Um, I think she's going to try and keep it updated as she finds out more info. And um, yeah, it's, there's quite a few good books coming out next year. I mean, obviously, this is just the YA selection. This doesn't even cover um, any of the adult stuff coming out that I want to be reading. Um, I also haven't mentioned Sarah J Mass's books that are supposedly coming out next year. I think we're getting um, A Court of Thorn and Roses novella, possibly, or book, I don't know, book four, maybe. Um, and I believe we're supposed to be getting the next Throne of Glass book, but that might have been pushed back. So, you know, it's going to be a busy year next year again. Um, and I've already got loads to read this year. So there we go. So that's what I've got my eye on for next year. Obviously sequels of books that I really enjoyed, they're naturally going to get picked up. Um, but also I kind of want to see what else is out there and try and read other things. You will notice um, a complete and utter lack of contemporary on this list. I don't do YA contemporary, it just does very very little for me. Um, sorry, that's just the way I read. Um, but there we go. And let me know what you fancy that's coming out next year. You know, what have you already got on your I must buy this and read this um, list because I'm sure we've all got one of them. This list may change, this list may not change and it does depend what my library gets in as to whether I'll be buying them or borrowing them. So I'll have to wait and see. There we go. I will leave a couple of book blogs down in the description box for you to go and check out. I don't know who they are at the moment but, you know, you'll find out when you go and click on them. And... Um, as always, thank you very much for watching and happy reading. Bye.